Hey, Amy, what's cooking? Afterthought invites and lots of homecoming drama. All of this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Hey, Amy, how are you doing? Oh, I am doing. How are you, Melissa? I am well. I don't say that a lot. I'm... I'm doing well. I do want to throw out a disclaimer right now that it is possible that you will hear screaming in my home, Mm -hmm. and it is from my young... Oh, oh, Halloween. Put that on the board. Um, It is from my youngest canine, who is crated so that I could do this, and she doesn't shit up the house. Although, somebody find wood. Don't get dirty. Somebody find wood and knock on it, because it's been over a month since we've had an incident. Thank you. You're so welcome. So I'm thrilled with her, but I don't want to have this great experience talking to you for an hour and and sharing and being super happy and then going downstairs to a fucking blowout. No. Nothing would disappoint me more. And I I don't think I'm up for it. Um, But you did just say Halloween. And I know we're not at all scheduled to discuss it. I hate Halloween. I'm super hated. Is it one of your favorites? Oh, did you say, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. If I had to sit, if I had to sit here and Uh, listen to somebody say, I love Halloween. I love candy. I love seeing the cut. I would have freaked the fuck out. Mm -mm. I know I'm supposed to be in knee deep in my hundred gratefuls, but I'm so grateful right now that you hate Halloween as much as I do. I'm so (laughs) grateful that you hate it too. We live, I live in the South where they are fixated on transforming every beautiful natural tableau into one of these creepy fests where you can't even drive your car through because in the middle of the day, they have the fog machines going, people jumping out of the woods, trying to get you to wreck yourself. It's horrifying. It's horrifying. Even the billboards are scary. I don't like You have like all it. of those beautiful, like, dro- like drooping, weepy Ugh. trees, and I just picture... Horrible things happening yes, under yes. those trees. You hear, yes, every horror movie that you have seen amplify that times a billion because it is just starting to get cold and people don't know how to deal with the cold down here. They have no concept. They're like, what happened to the sand? There's just no <laughs> idea. And so they're wandering around, you know, looking looking through the corn and then magically some gigantic Bubba jumps out with a chainsaw laughing. You've wet yourself. Then you're vomiting. It's not, you don't want these hay rides. There's far too much bodily fluid and none of it is fake ketchup. It's all gross. And the kids love it. All the kids go out and get, get like jobs being these scarers, which is even worse to think that, you know, little Tommy No Nuts from down the street is somehow getting very excited that he's going to jump out with a hatchet and make somebody piss themselves. How does this seem like a good activity? Whatever happened to like restacking books in the library, parents? I don't like it. So I got an email that said about our show that said, yes, listener feedback, da 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 The feedback was, I think Amy is great. Uh-oh. I want to know more about her. No. We know we know everything about you, Melissa, and your crackhead family of dogs and kids and husband who picks up shit. They they know me, but what they they know, you got some kids, you live in the South. I mean, that's all they've got. That's so right. that's right. So I love when you share these stories because it gives the two or three listeners who have written <laughs> to say, and if there are two or three who have written, there are many more who haven't because I got to tell you, dear listener, that seems to be the trend, not writing to tell us what you're thinking or feeling. And I understand <laughs> because I'm an introvert who loves to share my opinion with my dogs because we are all in-house, but I do want to hear from you. I we, mean, don't think We really think that- have incentivized quietude. So maybe we're the reverse meditation podcast. As soon as you listen, you're incentivized to not put your fingers on the keyboard or not rate and not write in and not get on a megaphone and say to all your friends at the cocktail party, do you know what I listen to on the podcast? What the podcast? Let me tell you how to download the thing. Do you guys go to cocktail parties because if you do and you're not making that terrible sound amy just made with <laughs> that's the maybe that's the problem if our listeners are at that kind of a cocktail party it's very extroverty ah, ah. um so here halloween is we've discussed this two years in a row now ding dong oh, so yes. 
for eight minutes this summer, I was down to one dog and I thought, Shirley doesn't really care if the doorbell rings. I mean, she'll bark, but if I open the door, she'll take 10 steps outside, humph, and come back inside. Aww. Exactly. But now I'm back up to Crackhead Zoo. And as I'm sure you'll hear in the background, it's, well, it's a fucking nightmare. Oh, part of that second, is self-inflicted wound. Second only to 4th of July. 4th of July, they're afraid Right. So they crawl up my shorts and vibrate, which, <laughs> hey, you know, which could be great. Independence. But... <laughs> yeah. That seems like the forefathers were thinking of you. <laughs> but this one, I'd rather them not be afraid. This one, they're just posturing and screaming and, and they're just miserable. So what do you do? You put the bowl outside with a note that says, take one. <laughs> and after at 430, after the first group passes, they're all gone. Like what? What do you do? It's so stupid. Well, I have questions for you. All right. You you hate Halloween. Check. Hate it. Check. I, that's we should say done because that's yeah. the right answer, and you should Correct. win all the prizes. But I, my question is: Do you hate it just because of the dogs and the sickening not candy? That's just little sugar sugar segments that have been formed and dyed to look like triangles. Do you hate it for more reasons than that, or is that enough? I do. So there is. I could sneak into the midst of a minute here. There is a Jewish holiday. This podcast makes me seem very Jewy, and I'm not. But I will. I'll take this opportunity. The, you're a Jew, though. Yes, I one thousand percent. So there. I don't know how Jewy. Like it's you. Just you. You Jew. You Jew. You don't get to. You know. So Halloween is. I'm dressed. You Jew. You Jew. Halloween <laughs> is to quote Amy. <laughs> you Jew. Well, I got the Catholic over here. So if you ever want to get really, really sad. Just let, me, just let me talk. All right. Back to you, Jew. Um, so I do. But so Halloween is it started with like clowns. And I fucking hate that. I fucking hate masks and hiding. And I hate all of that stuff. The whole people love costume parties. I hate costume parties. What are you presenting? What are you hiding? What's going on under there? What? I mean, I think I saw was it John Wayne Gacy? Was he the serial killer who put clown makeup on and killed people? Oh god. It's all it's all one to me. It really is. So kids, your parents can give you candy. I give my kids candy. I'm a I'm a fan. Chocolate really. But going to other people's houses and and begging for food and and thinking it's cute and I have the memories of that one rubber band on the plastic mask that we used to have when we were little and then ah. you're breathing inside that plastic mask and it getting all like wet and gross in there and you had to take it off just to breathe. I have bad memories. Then for what age is Halloween? Do kids not know when to stop after 7.45, 8 o'clock? There are grown adults in sweatpants with a fist standing <laughs> at my, and a pillowcase oh. standing, oh, that wasn't my dog. That That's was yours. Right. That's right. He really doesn't like those grown adults with masks and fists. Butters. Butters. They're not even wearing costumes after the age of 15, 16. They are, they're like, give me candy. You know what? Fuck you. You can fucking drive. I don't know what you're doing in my front lawn looking for candy. And we do give out full-size bars. So people Whoa. are really attracted to coming to this tiny neighborhood. But anyway, there. my point before was there is a Jewish holiday called Purim. <gasps> That many have not heard of, which is fine. But, I have. But the whole point of Purim, which you, in which you also dress up as from this story, or if you're kids, you dig out your Halloween costume from last year, is to give and not to take. So following that mitzvah minute and trying to do good things, you go around and you put little bags of candy and treats at people's doors and you leave them there. You go so Halloween. And you, so Halloween is legit Jewy. It's that's it all came with the it's roots. reverse Jewy. It's no, it's reverse Jewy. You Halloween give is in gimme, Halloween. gimme, gimme. You give in Halloween. You have to. Do you know how much candy I fucking give out in Halloween? Oh, that's you. You kid. don't go door to door like and a ask beggar. for things. Yeah. yeah, you're a beggar on Halloween, and you are like a mm -hmm. the other half of the Robin Hood, where you're mm -hmm. giving, not really to people with nothing but you put together little cookies and candies and sweets or whatever and you put these little packages at people's homes so it's it's joy that's dropped for you and not sending your kids out as beggars to find your favorite bottle caps from 1976 
They do that here in our neighborhood. Do you have like boo? I forget what it is. I think it's called. Yeah. You get booed and they put a big sign on your front door that says boo. Let a little child drew. And then they leave you a bag of candy instead of, you know, a giant bag of dog poop, which is what people used to leave when I was a young kid. So what happens after they boo you? So they give you this bag and then what are you obligated to do? You go and do it to three other people. It's there's like a little everybody writes a little poem and it's supposed to be unique to you. And then they say, you do this to blah, blah, blah. And you keep like it's a pass it on game. So it's a pyramid scheme. Say That's what it. it is, Amy. It's a pyramid That's scheme. It. It's, it's run by CBS. Halloween. Yeah. The <laughs> yes! seasonal candy section invented the boo game, you know, with supplemental assistance from art supplies. And, and <laughs> absolutely. That's what it is. Tape. And and you have to leave that taped to your door yeah. kind of like the blood from the first shot whatever anyway even if it's not good looking that's the other thing it's like oh this was so sweet for five minutes and now really <laughs> and thank god right now as we're later in october somebody does it to you at the end of september you need to leave that shit up for a month yeah. oh no well you know no <laughs> and what's worse we weren't booed this year oh well i mean were you no no, they don't really. They don't really do it with as much gusto over here. We've we've moved into a different neighborhood as of I think coming up on four years, three four years, and prior to that, it was honestly the only thing that the little kids could get together. We're in a super kid zone over here. It's ridiculous. You would think that Boo would be right up their alley, but in the other place, that's all they did. It was. It was the boo and nothing. They couldn't even get together the luminarias or any of this other nonsense. We would, the, the homeowners association would say, oh, let's all do it. Blah, 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 blah. And like four houses would put them out. And then there would be like a row of dead black. And then they'd pop up again. Like it's the worst. If not everybody does it. Stop. That's the the bags of sand with the candle in it yes. that light up the, the street. That's beautiful. It doesn't seem safe, but it's beautiful. Especially if you're in a drier area where shit could catch on fire. and We'd love to catch things on fire down here. With Dear California listeners, yeah. mm-hmm. this is not for you. This is not for you. That's really nice like on New Year's mm-hmm. Eve to mm-hmm. see that. And that's, I mean, that's, you're and not And some gonna... people embrace the idea. That I love it when these people embrace shit all year long. They think luminarias, that's great. Let's do it for Halloween. They'll be orange. Let's do it for Easter. They'll be pink. And they're doing it now in one of one of my favorite and also hated stores, depending on which day it is when I walk in there. The Christmas shoe shop? It's called At Home. It used to be called Garden Ridge. And it's it's just a cavalcade of all the shit on overstock that you think that's cheap enough for me to buy, but I won't today. Well, that's the store. So I walk in speaking of all the luminarias. Now they have black Christmas trees because I guess if you love Christmas trees that much, you're going to put out a Christmas tree at Halloween because you're a fucking wacko. Yes. It's a solid black. All it's like a fake tree. That's black instead of green or white or pink or dope colored. It's black (laughs) with orange bullshit on it and crows and stuff like you're going to like ass head it. You, what are you doing with your life? My groomer, my dog groomer loves Halloween and I love her, but I can't reconcile the two. They just, it takes a very special person to love Halloween. You know what I do love? Uh, Dia de los Muertos. Like oh. I love all that sugar candy skull stuff. I love all of that. But I, I, I'll serve you dinner on plates that dinner that Amy cooked on plates with <laughs> on plates with all of those skeletons. But I, I can't with Halloween. It's too much. It comes with too much involved, and I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. And I really don't like the the beggar aspect of it. So. We, I always want to turn the lights out and say we're done. So as your kids age, what do they do? Here's the other reason. What do they do for Halloween? When they're little, you take them out. You stand at the driveway. They walk up, ding dong, get your candy. When Ma- when Mallory, I guess, when we first moved here, it was like six years ago. She was in fifth grade. Um, she went trick-or-treating with a couple of school friends, stood at the – Stuart took her because somebody had to give out candy and guard the dogs. And I hate contact with people. So he was, he's our representative in this world. So he went and she got to the top. She took her candy and then looked behind the homeowner and saw a cooler, a metal basin cooler, really, full of ice and beer. And she said, Is that for the parents? (laughs) 
So oh. she comes back down the driveway with her with her pillowcase a little heavier or her orange pumpkin a little heavier and a beer in her hand for Stuart, who is walking with her. Oh, I love your neighborhood so much. And she, well, Stuart loved it too. So, so they got to, he got to enjoy Halloween a little more. It's getting chilly. I'm thinking a hot toddy would be a good, a good transition. Hot but toddy is always a good transition. Then there's always that family who forgot or that older couple who didn't realize it was Halloween because... They're dumb. And how would they know? It's not like every store starting in August started to have candy corn exhibited clearly as soon as you walked in. How how would they know it's Halloween? So they go into their pantry and they take out like their Harry and David basket that has tiny jellies and and Pim's crackers and and all of that. And like a beautiful pear. Exactly. So they come home and you're like, somebody gave you fucking raisins, a toothbrush. Who gave you the pims? Like who gave you apricot jellies? Or that was, that's always my favorite house to go to. Well, two shout outs. One is my darling, Jessica Toddy. I used to work with a woman, Jessica Toddy. And of course we could not let a single meeting go by without our hot Toddy. And she was actually quite attractive. So it worked out well for her to be named Toddy, if you can imagine of all the names to have. And number two, we do live in the South. So similar to the beer in the pumpkin, we actually, at each cul-de-sac, the parents treat it like a soccer game and they pop up their bag chairs and they put out a bonfire in the middle of the street and they pass around wine and they have snacks for each other. And then the kids come up and there's like a communal vat of candy that you just get to run up and have. And then all the parents who are walking around, you know, would you like a cocktail? Would you blah, blah, blah? Because it's it's temperate. It's beautiful. And you don't have to leave. Right. And you don't have to leave the neighborhood. You're in for the night. Right. So that's how we roll. We but, used to have that at the old neighborhood too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we stopped talking to our neighbor. That's I don't right. know what went wrong. I don't like those neighbors. Let's move. <laughs> and we did. Um, <laughs> Yay! And we did. Well done, yeah. you. Yeah, I thought so. We're we're doing well. And they're doing well. So we just had homecoming. <gasps> Speaking of costumes. Yeah, right? Speaking oh. of costumes. So again, every year I see on Facebook the whole old school, old neighborhood, going to homecoming. And I it's really nice to see these kids grow up. It's really nice to see, you know, facial hair on, on the little kids from the neighborhood. I know you hate facial hair. Um, it's That's a secondary sex organ. You know that, right? That would be like me at being a man saying, it's good to see these girls get tits. You I, know, it's that's really... That's <laughs> exactly what it's like. And I'm like, yeah, g- 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 eh, eh. no, nope. no, but it's all, but facial hair is awkward. I get, I take your point, but you, ugh. okay. Did you know, I mean, that was when we talked about it in health class in sixth yes. grade, it was. I'm a sucker for secondary sex characteristics. I love them, but I don't want to think about it on a child. Yeah, well, these children are 17 now, so... Always a child. Always Always, a child. Always a child. That's true. Always a child. I'm not saying I want a piece. I'm just saying they are (laughs) growing up. (laughs) I'm saying even though, I mean, maturity, like it or not, or actuality or not, is really creeping up on these families that we used to know. And it's really nice to see these kids. And now, because we didn't grow up here, because we didn't attend all of the elementary school and family parties, and I was like a class parent, so I I threw the parties with my friends who I got to know. Here, I don't know any of the parents. I don't know any of the kids. I have to trust my kids to MGC, make good choices. That's what I text them all the time. MGC, shut up, mom. So I hear from Mallory that a bunch of her friends are going to like the lunch bunch and the classroom or class friends are going to one girl's house for a pre homecoming picture taking Chick-fil-A platter. And then they'll all go to the dance. Super. It's what you've seen on Facebook. It's what all your friends, kids are doing. Everybody's doing it. I love that phrase. So she didn't go to the football game Friday night and Saturday morning. She crawls into my bed and says, something happened last night. And I shit my pants because that's what I do when somebody says to me, something happened last night. And she said, the party for today is canceled because my friend got in a fight with her mom and she called her a raging bitch. So here's my question. I got several, but right. (laughs) So the mother said, you can't have your party here. Forget it. It's over. You don't get to call me a raging bitch and I'm still going to host your friends. 
Well, it's the day of or the night before, and everybody had plans to come to you. What do you do? Because I would want to punish my child for being a dick, right. but I don't want to screw over everybody else who was coming, dressed, ready, whatever, and their parents who had a location for pictures. And I, I don't want to upset everybody. I just want to retaliate <laughs> against my own child. What would you do? Is there somewhere else that you can have this party? I mean, does it have to be... I hate that everybody can't have a party because this one girl lost her fucking mind. Well, more so if you were the parent who got told you're a raging bitch, would you have canceled the party? No, I would not have. No. I absolutely would not have. I would have figured out something else because in my estimation as the <clears throat> as the host, that's a different responsibility. It's it's actually a responsibility. It's not it's not a privilege. It's not a nice for the child. It's a responsibility for everyone else. You're catering to them. They had nothing to do with this going wrong. That other girl's got to get her shit beat down tight and hard. But that doesn't mean that the whole, I, I just wouldn't, I don't know, maybe I'm super soft. So, well, that's the thing. I thought, well, look at you keeping your pimp hand strong and saying, no, like you can't have this part. I never would have done that. Correct. I would have said, Correct. give me your phone. You don't get to... <clears throat> Play on TikTok, talk to your friends, blah, blah, blah. You don't get to do anything because you just totally disrespected me. Or more likely, I would have been like, well, she's not wrong. I am a raging bitch. <laughs> so right. you're buying Chick fil A next time, Missy. And yeah. I'll make you, a, and I'll wait for you to apologize when you realize what you said was really mean for somebody who's doing all of this shit. And for we, you. Don't, we don't know the context, too. I mean, it could have been one of these things where. This is the first time this child has ever crossed that line. Yeah, I and don't it was, think so. I and it her. was so egregious. This could have been where she was, you know, hyperventilating at the end of a rope. It could be that the mother is tight as a fucking tick. And when shit like this happens, I mean, you got to read your kid. If they're already schizo and stressed out and maybe it was, you know, the hair's on fire and the fingernails yeah. are the wrong color. And I don't yeah. know. I don't have girls. But if it was just such a, if it was an emotional meltdown and, you know, you burn my toast and now you're the enemy, mom. I mean, at a certain point, you got to roll with some of that shit. And plus, I cuss all the time. So I have zero legs to stand on. Well, so here's what happened. Mallory brought her big blue eyes into my bed and said, hmm. this is what happened. And, and she just looked at me. She didn't ask anything. And I said, did you want to have it oh, here? Oh, she did so <laughs> ask something. Let me, let me instruct you in the ways of big blue eyes. Okay, <laughs> well, mama. This, this, is, this, is the, this is the anatomy of the ask. It starts with, something happened last night. Blink, 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 blink. blink. Mom's on red, red alert ready to solve at any moment and so relieved that no crisis involving anyone's pants being unzipped has occurred, right? Blink, 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 blink. I will give you any party you want, Blue Eyes. Blink, yeah, blink, yeah, blink. She, yeah, she didn't ask, please. So then they got even bigger. This girl smarter than all of us. <laughs> they got even bigger and she said, really? I can? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. What the only fuck do I care? $70,000 for the soda bill. Yeah. Blink, blink. So, yeah, she said. <laughs> so Stu's like, I'll go to Capriati's. I'll get some sandwiches. Mm. Is that cool? Mm. <laughs> and she's like, you're the mm. best. So she left and Stuart went online and ordered the Bobby, the Capistrami. The, he ordered all the goods. And we had it at our house, right? So nine girls who I don't know, yeah. again, because she knows them from Spanish class or she knows them for wherever. Just I don't know these girls came in there tiny dresses well i made the joke after what is it a, a murder of crows it is a gaggle of geese it a, is. a whore of teenagers they what's are it? they are <laughs> what's, what's it called so i see all these teeny tiny tiny dresses online and i'm thinking dear god please don't let me say something stupid to mallory's <laughs> new friends i can't be trusted that's why i have a podcast <laughs> like please please don't let me embarrass her I'm thankful. I'm sorry. I'm grateful. One of my hundred gratefuls. I'm grateful that I have control over my speech. When, I don't. When? I'm <laughs> trying. It's preemptive. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, if it's thoughtfully controlled, like if you have a little, it's like the, it's like the dogs in the kennel. They settle down for a short period of time because they know. Then there's a flare up. That's right. That's right. So these girls came and were tastefully dressed and what? I couldn't, I couldn't believe mine eyes. Like I just, I looked at them and I thought, yeah, I mean, if I had, well, I guess I do have those legs. If I had, look, you know your assets, they're 16, 15 years old. 
they've got assets. So, but they were not hoary dressed. They were adorable and appropriate and nothing was skin tight and too short. And they were delightful. These girls were delightful and I they can't, ate. I can't, I'm, I'm stunned. Not because of the countenance of these young women, but because every young woman, women, every young woman dresses like <laughs> a whore and they don't learn grammar neither. Oh my God. <laughs> The oh the dresses did you did you forget the bottom half of your dress today, my lord and my god or the top or both, right? Is that and a bikini? Did somebody paint that on you this evening? Before? Even the bikinis. Who's letting you out of the house? Why why can't you cover more of you? You're going swimming. You're not taking a shower in your own house. Put some clothes on. Jesus, I don't know. I have boys. Suit. It's well, easy. your boys take girls to dances. They do. They do. And the girls are shocking. They're just shocking. They're ha- most of them are athletes. Um, you know, they're just stunners. They're stunners from start to finish. And I, the only justification that I can hear from the, the moms who I trust are things like, I invite you to purchase a pair of shorts for a teenage girl. Like that's their, that's their response to dress code when everyone goes, when they start looking at why is your child's genitals hanging out of the bottom of their clothing, which is Uh, labia, 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 labia. tuck that shit back up. So no. And she's then their answer repeatedly is I invite you to buy shorts. I invite you to buy a shirt. And they sort of go back to this idea that that's what's out there and that makes it appropriate and, or I don't know, man. Have you seen, you have a community forum on Facebook that where people post and asking for things, be it a contractor or, or, so one of the posts every year at our local one is where, where do your daughters buy shorts? Where do your preteen, teen, where, where do you buy shorts? And the fact of the matter is the dress that Mallory wore was not knee length and she wore her little Nike pros underneath it, which are tiny volleyball shorts that hug everywhere that needs to be hugged but they're what if a mighty wind came right like that's that's always or if you had to i don't know sit down i mean it's like so ridiculous these things they're so even it's like a tennis skort as long as there's something underneath i don't know i dropped my hairband let me bend over and get it like (laughs) hey these are 15 year olds this isn't a porn stop so they were all so tastefully dressed and put together, and all of their parents came too. Oh, ha ha ha! And there were, and who knew how many? Because kids aren't real big on RSVPing via text chain. So I didn't know how many kids were coming, and we're so close to the school that we could have taken two trips if we needed to. But we have two cars. We Stuart actually in his car can fit more people than I can in my truck. So stop it, stop it. So we took two two cars. But what I thought was interesting was one of these girls who is in one of her classes gave her an invitation to a sweet 16, which is in like 10 minutes. It's like next weekend. So she has an RSVP date on it of a week and a half ago. (laughs) Okay. Which means what? It means that her friend has the presence of mind that she's been invited into a new social circle and she's going to include Mallory and we're not going to say anything else about it. Yeah. That's what that means because we all know it means that she was not originally invited to this party. But this new friend at least has some class, some class. So I say yes to you. I say, yay. (laughs) So (laughs) she gets this invite and the mother says, um, she's so excited to be invited to your party. I'm like, party? I'm just having you here for pictures, girl. This is the party. Sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be way more music if there were a party. I would have, I don't know, I would have bowls of things if there were a party. I wouldn't have them standing in the kitchen with my dog's noses up their very short skirts oh, if tight. it were a party. The dogs were great. So I looked at the invite and I thought, all right, well... She didn't have to invite you. I mean, you're in one class with her. She likes you. All right, we're going to a sweet 16, which then leads you to what do you give as a gift at a sweet 16? Well, I mean, you're you're also sort of glossing over the fact that were these printed invitations that somehow formally. Yeah. So is this like mitzvah-esque? 
It's at an Italian restaurant in our area, the back room Uh, of an Italian restaurant. No, No, I get it now. Yeah, okay, great. That's fine. So I think the invitation might be the nicer, like it's one of the nicest parts of the party. No, no, no. They got a room because it means it's going to be of a scale that they can't have that many girls at their house and because they want to make it special or nice. Is she an Italian girl? How the fuck do I know? What's the, does, what's, think of her last name and don't voice it out loud. Yes. Does it end in thank you? Yeah, that's how yes. you know. Or it you starts, could just or you could just look at a. But it's anyway, got two separate capital letters. In if it, it's so yes. if it's a private room in an Italian restaurant, it's either somebody with very good taste or an Italian. And the reality is, they also don't want to cook or clean up after that many other people, or they I know somebody that. at the restaurant. All all of the above. Yes, yes. Check, check, check. So, um, it's. It's just a, a way to facilitate the party and make it a little bit special, a little bit nice, um, and also communicate. Maybe that gives the girls a chance to dress just a little bit different or nicer or flashier or whatever they might do, as opposed to we're coming over and doing s'mores in the backyard, that kind of a thing. So. My kind of thing. <clears throat> yep. Gift. I always go with a gift certificate for somebody that I don't know at all. Like a, like a logical gift certificate, a movie gift certificate or one of the restaurants they always go to, or she's 15. She's going to be going on dates. Does cash or, still or work? Or a manicure. That's nice. Does cash still work? Yeah, you can give her cash. Sure. Is that obnoxious to no. give cash? No. Is that judged? No. What do you fucking care? She came over your house and ate a sandwich. You're going to dinner. That's it. <laughs> He has a cap of straw. She's too early. It's too early to worry about her feelings. I think cash is fine. I think a, I think a manicure is always nice. <laughs> you you don't know how long she's going to be with you, right? It's too early to worry about her feelings. <laughs> but that's the fact, man. I mean, what is she, Spanish class? You don't even know if you're going to stick with Spanish. You got a lot of variables. Oh, my God. It's too early to worry about her feelings. You're absolutely right. She's not my friend. Um you know, pick, so, a, pick a gift that reflects well on you. Go eat the lasagna and come home. That's it. Happy I birthday. love the idea of a manicure. I yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. And that's, that's a sizable thing, too, because you don't really know, but you know how much it costs. So that's kind of... Right, nice. and I'll, I'll figure the tip in there. So all she needs to do is mm-hmm. go and leave and not still have to do a... Yeah, that's what we'll do. I'll give Mallory the choice. I'll say it's either cash or this. She'll, she'll decide. I, do, I just wish I could be the parent who said, you're a dick and now your friends can't come here. Why? Why do you think that's a great thing? There is some very small level of give props to it, but don't you think it's overly dramatic? I mean, you just told me two things about this family. Number one, whatever, about this incident that you really don't think it's the first time this chick has mouthed off to her mom in such a flagrant way. So the both things seem like an overreaction. Right. It seems like the girl was having a meltdown and the mom's response is to I see your meltdown and I will raise you. Yeah. 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 Party for all of your food. <laughs> yeah. And like, I just had this conversation sake, with my girlfriend whose daughter got in a huge fight with her boyfriend. And I said, that's fine. She's a teenager. But the second he opens her mouth, I'm sorry, the second he opens his mouth to her that way, you're a fucking grown up. Get your shit together. You don't get to talk to a kid like that, especially if it's not your kid. I know that if I yell at my kid, I can walk into their room and lick their face and make everything okay. But as a grown up who's not related to open a mouth like that, that is that grow the fuck up. Seek help. Grow up. You don't get to do that. (laughs) Seek help. Seek help. That's another fantastic business card that we need to preprint and have at the ready. I was going to change our podcast name to Badass and Brilliant. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? That truth, makes you badass. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> truth in advertising. Right? I love it. Um, hey, Amy, we started a hey. segment last week called Hey, Amy. Hey. What, what's cooking? Ba, ba, da, da, ba. Oh, that's our theme music. See, I yeah. love it. I love it so. You miss it. Well, last time, as you recall, I waxed rhapsodic about mushrooms and I ended up with extra mushrooms. So I thought, what the fuck am I going to do with all these mushrooms now? So I made the bisque. It was a stunner. Yeah, everybody loved it. Um, nobody ate it but me, as I knew would be the case. And it was a stunner. And then I took Wait, the. Huh? Why didn't anybody eat it? Because they're punk asses. They're punk ass bitches. I don't like calling them bitches, though, because it denigrates the word bitch. I really get frustrated. It's because it's mushroom bisque. It's a sort of a brown, congealy, creamy. I love it. Root earthed. Stop. No one's no one's touching that shit. I love all those things. So I had the extra chanterelles and I had some pork, my son's favorite 
dishes is pork chop, rib chop. Once he figured out, once he figured it, well, he figured out that bone in meat was better than regular meat flavor. Right. So then he always wants to order things and be very specific because then he also figured out that the rib chop cut of a pork chop is better than the pork loin chop. So he always asks for pork chop, rib chop <laughs> because <laughs> so everywhere. So it's I just like, want to hear him say, yeah, I, have a, I would like to have the pork chop, pork chop, rib chop. Is it rib chop, <laughs> rib chop, rib, rib, bone in rib chop? I like the pork chops and applesauce. Can I get That's that? My can I get that ribeye bone in, please? I mean, it's just ridiculous. He'll order a porterhouse when we go out to a steakhouse. I'm like, child, stop. You are a child. You don't get to order that. And he'll lick the plate. So anyway, so I had these massive and they were ridiculous. I got them at Costco and they were like bicep thick. I've never seen wow. things cut. They were ridiculously cut thick. I thought, okay, these bastards must be stuffed. They're just too thick for anything else. So I butterflied them. And I thought, hey, Chanterelle, I know what you're getting ready to do. It sounds like a 1950s singing group. So I made some delicious. Chanterelle. I made some delicious cornbread, apple, Chanterelle, Morancy cherry, tart Michigan cherry There stuffing. are too many fruits in whatever it is you're saying. So good. It was so what good. the fuck did you just say? I heard corn, it was apple, stuffing. It's, cherry. It's, it, was, it was stuffing. So it was, it was corn. I made homemade cornbread fresh, which was banging and then i let it cool and i diced it and i put in carrots and celery and garlic and thyme and all the delicious and sage all the delicious you don't follies. start singing simon and garfunkel right now i'm, I'm telling you and then i mixed all that bad shit into a giant bowl coated with some egg shoved it in there packed it in actually loose you like to say pack it in tight but you keep it very loose and then i broiled that i up. like all those words it was delicious it was so delicious Giorgio came into the house from lacrosse. He walked in. This sweet little fucker walks in and says, what is making this house smell so delicious? Something you won't eat. He, no, he did eat it. He ate it all and he, he licks the bones clean. He goes crazy chomping on that shit. Everybody eats it except for the middle child. He won't do anything except stand in the corner and harumph like a disgruntled referee. It's terrible. We have a listener. I have a friend who says, we have a listener yay, who calls her kids thing one, thing two, I and thing those. three. Everybody has those but me. My friends have hashtags for their kids. Like they've got all their little monikers. I don't have anything. Yeah, the South is real big on monikers. <sighs> Fucking South. I, I, need, you- I need to do it. I need to come up with some. Well, I also like to try to not talk about them very much. So as evidently the write-in confirms but today I we it. um we tried a cornbread that was made with cream corn that sounds kind of i'll try it <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean it sounds kind of <laughs> i want to be supportive if you're branching out in food territory i want to be supportive but creamed corn even the name creamed corn inside something else that's that's really really you're making it dirty janitor and disgusting, bucket that's I'm... it that's the stuff in the janitor's bucket after Look. cleanup Look, I was raised by humans, all right, a pack of wolves, all right. who cream corn was was on the docket. Like it was one of the guaranteed cans that would be in the pantry. Wait a always, minute, wait a always. minute, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Are Don't you be- telling me yeah. that cream corn is a product that begins and ends its life in a container? This is not something that you take corn and and sort of cook it and add. There's a can that you pop open with that sludge in it. It's in a can. You get take out the can opener. You turn. You turn. You turn. And then there's a gelatinous mungy mass. What the fuck are you eating? That's how I was raised, man. That's how. Oh God, you need to. You want? You need to get in touch with my husband. As an Italian, do you you want to be more offended? Ready for this? Hang on, Um, I gotta. I gotta stabilize myself. Hang on. As okay. tomato sauce, as as well, I think I just gave you the punchline. One of the meals that my mother would prepare for us were fish sticks that she took out of a cardboard box from the freezer. Yeah, yeah. And sh- Morton's. shook. Yes, Gordon's. Mm. Gordon's fisherman. Trust the Gordon's fisherman. He's uh, yellow. Yeah, and shake. She would shake them onto a baking pan, put them in the oven. And when they came and make spaghetti, so we would have fish sticks and spaghetti. That whoa, was a whoa, meal. Whoa, Don't judge. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a little confused. Don't uh, be. What in the, what? 
No. This was a warm meal. This was this was one of a one of the hot meals we got. Fish sticks shook out from the freezer onto the baking pan. Um, spaghetti, stovetop spaghetti that you make, and then instead of the sauce that you would put on it or gravy, as yes, yes, several right, friends correct. call it, yes, yes, yes. A can, another can sit right next to the one of cream corn. It said tomato sauce. Yeah, you use that as like the base of something else that you're going to make with it. Or you no. open the can and no. put a spoon in it. No, oh. <laughs> what? And you take you take the spoon, you scoop it out, and you put a line of the red sauce uh. on top of each fish stick. What? And then you wait, and then you put three or four scoops of it onto the spaghetti, and you mix that up. Why? 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 All this to Why? tell you that nothing I ate ever had flavor to it until this, I was a grown up. My love. Do, my love. Do you feel this, sorry for me yet? No, I understand that this is why you are so thin. What That's, do you mean? All of that shit is horribly unhealthy and yes, fattening. Yes, I would never eat again. <laughs> no, I ate it all. We ate it all. Why would you put a fish stick is tolerable. You can eat fish sticks. Fish sticks, bueno. Fish sticks, and you know. They make them better now than they plus, used to when Check we plus eat fish them. sticks. And when you cook them really, really tight, it's really just a breading delivery device. There's no fish yes. in it. Yes, I get yes, it. Yes, I get yes. it. I get it. You know, we we had something called tartar sauce in the 70s, which is also kind of gross, but I love it. I'm with Liz Taylor on that. I'll, I'll eat it. I'll go there. Uh, even ketchup on a fish stick, you should be slapped if you want to take tomato sauce. And use it as what do you what do you what? what but it was what? the sauce for the spaghetti too. It wasn't just the sauce. That's for... not the, the the word sauce is misleading in this application. <laughs> okay, You're saying that misnomer misled yes, my mother. It's just a thicker puree of tomato. It's not technically a sauce. Well, it was in our house. Oh my god! I kind of I hate to even say this out loud now. I kind of want fish sticks and spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. craving for it. Oh. And maybe some cream corn on the side. I think I know what's for dinner. No, I told my kids we were ordering in Chinese because I made them eat leftovers for dinner last night. I, 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. You're horrified? I, I, Is this a new segment? Guess what I ate when I was little? Oh, God. <laughs> How did you become an adult? I don't know, but when my oldest brother, um, who we call Uncle Douchebag, when mm -hmm. he got married... Uh, his wife, when he was about to get married, his wife called me and said, is it true that you ate fish sticks and spaghetti? And then the next night, is it true? Like she just could not believe what our diet consisted of growing right. up. Because obviously he said, I'll make dinner. And he made fish sticks and spaghetti. And she said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> she was horrified. Wow. Just wow. Yeah. That's, so a, that's a no. That's, so it was that's shocking a hard to pass. Mm. Other people. So I'm kind of craving it now. Like you said, no, that no, breading. No, and... no, no. Melissa, the yeah. abuse ends here. Right here? Uh, yes. Okay. These destructive generational lapses today, it ends with you. You're not going to continue this. You can have fish sticks. You can even go out and purchase fish and have it. Real fish? Yes, any kind. You can have a fish stick. Fish sticks are okay. Fish sticks are okay. Fish sticks with t <laughs> tomato is just not okay. They were freezer burned too because they've uh, been there for a uh, while. So it was uh, more, yeah. And then I think that Gordon's Fisherman makes them better now. They make them in fillets that are like battered and not just. They have a panko option. Yeah, they're. I think <laughs> they, they could actually be delightful. Do. Yes, they can. They can be very good. And there is something, I don't know why I keep giving the props out to Costco because they suck my entire life dry. Paycheck, but yeah. yes, uh, at Costco, they have something called the ultimate fish stick, which is, you know, a perfect rectangle and, you know, sort of square on all sides and pretty thick. So you're actually getting a slab of fish in there. And then they've, they've coated it with really, really good breading. And it actually, it's, um, I don't know, it's not Pollock. It's they've named the fish that it is. So it's basically it's a it's a fish finger shaped fillet of fish that they've breaded expertly. And all you have to do is put them in the oven. They don't even have to fry. Them. Where are those frozen or yeah, they're frozen? Where? It's a blue bag. It says the ultimate. It literally is called the ultimate fish stick. Let me get a pen. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ultimate, ultimate fish stick. Fish stick. stick. 
Okay, and good. I'm going to get those. They're good. And it's and I'm going to serve my kids. And I might a little even do... lemon, a little dill on the side, maybe some rice pilaf. Not no, right. no pasta. Pilaf. That is not happening. No okay, pilaf. maybe a, maybe a salad, maybe some broccoli. You'll fart for weeks. We love broccoli. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get the ultimate fish ultimate sticks fish in the stick. blue bag. Blue bag. All right, I'm on it. Glad to um, help. Does anybody else? horrified by what their families served them while growing up? Are you shocked that nobody cared about your diet at all or what you ate or who you were? Never mind. That's fodder for therapy. Um, Please let us know. You can reach us on all the socials, on Facebook, Insta, and even Twitter if you want to tweet us at Listen Brilliant. We are most interested in hearing your stories. Or you can write us an email, which which have been coming in at brilliantobservations at gmail.com. We want to hear your stories, and we might even share them with our other dear listener. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, speaking of listener feedback, I got a letter for advice. Really? Yes, for our bad advice segment. Oh, good. We could get that. Bad we- Advice. Bad All right. advice. Dear Amy, I'm sure they meant dear Amy and Melissa. I'm sure they meant dear Melissa. Dear Amy, <laughs> I went out to dinner with friends. My husband and I went out to dinner with friends. We had a great night. And then the bill came. Uh-oh. Uh, the server put it in the middle of the table and then backed away slowly. <laughs> My friend picked it up and like a forensic scientist, went item by item. Uh, this ruined my night. What do you do when the check comes? It's almost, you got to start further back. You got to start with, what do you do when you decide to go out to dinner with friends? And do your level best to get yourself in a situation where you can afford the place that you're going to without a lot of stress or fuss or muss. And then when you're in the situation where the toll taker at, you know, the gates of hell wants to make sure that you've paid down to the penny, every single thing you can, you can offer the words, let's just split it or save yourself the grief. And just this one say, you know what? I I got it. I, there's no problem. Well, you, you catch us some other time. I got it. And just take that shit out of their hands. That's, I don't, I am so fortunate to not have Anybody in my life who does that kind of stuff, there are a few people who start to do it. And then we always, because they're beloved, otherwise they would not be in my friend group. They are so beloved. We're able to say, if it's going to make you more comfortable to really itemize everything out, I, I can wait. It makes me uncomfortable when you do that. So you tell me what you well, would rather do. you said do. that to somebody at the yes, table. And you, yes. And you know who that person is. Yes. And, and it's worked. <laughs> And it's worked. And she said, really? And then we talked for 20 minutes. <laughs> then we talked for 20 minutes about the ramifications of what I just said. And then ultimately, you know, at that point, I'm like, I just am so ready to leave. I don't care <laughs> how we cover this fucking bill. Also, a dear listener, by the way. <laughs> adored. Fully adored. Yeah, nobody, and much richer than me. Much richer. More than we in do. all ways richer. In all ways richer. Yes. So a lot of, dear listener, a lot of that money stuff comes from just how you're raised, just from breadline mentality, grandparents or parents or just what you've seen happen. It's not really usually uh, inception with your friend or coworker or whomever is sitting at dinner with you. That's not where it starts. It, it, it has roots elsewhere. So... I, I don't want to say, Stuart would say, just give me the fucking check. I can't deal with this. We'll eat top ramen right. for the next four days. Um, right. Whereas my inclination is to say, let's just split it. Here, just right. give me your card. We'll split it fitty-fitty. Then there's the couple with whom you dine that has 30 drinks. And I don't, personally, I don't really drink. So I might have a cocktail just to, at the very beginning, but to keep, Yes, refill, yes, refill, yes, refill throughout the course of the night. And I'm there thinking, well, actually, I hadn't thought about it until they say, let's just split the check. That's and a think- totally different thing. And that's the, that happens. And that is really shitty. When when the steak eating 15 sh- glasses of champagne looks over at my salad and goes, yeah, we'll just split it. And I'm like, 
no, I don't really want to split it. But and what I don't do you know, do? I don't know that I've ever stood up and said, unless it was a close friend, I was like, no, I'm, I'll take care of me. This Like, I don't think I would have ever, let me say it in actual words, since I can't seem to find any today. I haven't ever done this, but I somehow now feel the fuck it gene has empowered me to say, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. We're going to split. I don't care what your opinion of me is, if this makes me look cheap or if this makes me look not like a good host or in some way, it, if you're going to have any kind of, it's not about that. What it's about is this is not fair and it's more important for me to not feel taken advantage of, which is how I would feel. So all that is the unspoken backstory. I would say, no, I'm going to, let's just, I'll pay for mine. You pay for yours. And honestly, you- go ahead. I love that you said not a good host. And now I'm thinking you're handing out checks at your house when you have people over. <laughs> I it's it's with that's we talk about how you're raised. And the weird part is being an Italian, right? You're at least in, in our deal, you were simultaneously raised with this boundless generosity, regardless of what you have. You, you know, even when you don't have, you're still giving. You give, 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 give. And then except when you're in the house with your own people, then it's like, you cannot have. It's no, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, reuse that tinfoil 8,000 times, wash it out, it's still good. And you can still wear those pants another time. I don't care the shoes are tight. You're you're not that full grown. Leave them on. You and know, you only need those shoes for four hours for this fucking concert yes, for I an instrument. I know you're quitting and you'll never wear them again. Your happiness is not involved here. <laughs> not paying another $80 for shoes. Stuff it in and tighten it. Or, or you know what? Don't even lace them up. Your pants come down. Nobody can tell. So it's like there's this weird hybrid of it when it's when it's for anybody else. The shoemakers' right? kids don't have shoes. Well, yeah. I mean, honestly, we've got it. It quite quite literally just happened in our house this weekend. We've got some friends coming down next weekend. We're trying to do a little spruce up, get ready. You know, oh, because it'll be an overnight guest for a couple of days. Yay! Very excited. The one child, it's time for some new sheets on the bed, right? They've just, they've been washed <laughs> enough. They're just, not thing gross. They've just been washed enough. They've got a tear in the corner. It's just, it's time, right? We While have, you're there, look for cheese under the bed. We have three, I will not because I'll find it. We, we have three sets of sheets for the guest bedroom. And I don't really like any of them because they're just, they were from this bed or that bed. And they, they were never really thoughtfully. They were just like, that fits that bed, put it in there. Great. They're not really the nicest or softest. And so we need sheets for the child of my body who lives here, whose life I am devoted to protect and advance. And what do we buy but new guest sheets at 600 thread count? Because it's not, you know, well, we just, we want to, you know, I even said to husband, husband, you know, baga, 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 I don't, I'm trying to be good and not go out and buy all new towels. When we have towels, their towels are fine. Everything's fine. What am I doing? It's, it was fine. The last guest that we bought new ones for, what are we doing? I just didn't like the ones that I ended up getting. He's like, we should have things that we really, you know, that we feel good about giving to each guest. And I said, yeah, but child needs, she's fuck him. That was the answer. I love I love your husband so much. <laughs> Fuck he'll, him. He'll just ruin it anyway. Yeah. Well, that is very true. I mean, and they they're... sneak into the guest bedroom and they sleep in there too. The stupid jerks. Because it's clean, right? And it's got new sheets. Yes, <laughs> it's yes. got all the new stuff. And then I'll I'll spruce it up a cent. I'll punch him and say, "Get out!" And I put, you know this already. I put little nice smelly things in there, and it's all wonderful and. Ah! You know, the birds are all flapping. It's just gorgeous. You walk in and you're in this little, my house is also an overload, a, truly a chaos of color. And when we did that, I consciously thought, not everybody is me. It's amazing. I could realize this. So the guest room only is neutral. Everything in the room is is within like one degree of saturation difference. Taupe on taupe on taupe on taupe on beige on beige on beige on ivory and ivory and gold on gold. It's all very peaceful. It's very Zen-like. Everywhere else in the house, like, bing, 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 and then you go in there and it's... I love it. When should we be there? <laughs> right now. Get in the car. I would. Oh, I would. Um, your oldest, you said he took the SATs. Is he happy with his results? The SAT scores just came out and, and we've been struggling. Amy and I are both trying to get kids into college. Um, is he happy? He is happy. It's bizarre. 
he flip flopped his scores the way that the SAT works for those that don't for the way that SAT works these days for anybody. They've changed the numbers. They change everything changes. And each time they let you take it multiple times without penalty. And each time that you take it, it's a new version of the test. It's a different test. So depending on which day, you know, on which any given Sunday when you show up, you could be the winning football team. Any given test could be better suited for you or not. The other thing that you need to know is there's largely two segments of the test. By the way, by the way, if you're a white kid of privilege, it's it's more suited to you. Yeah, yeah. By the way, right? No, but I mean, it might. Well, some of the questions are are more specific to um, a particular course of study, or harder, or even before you get into things like biased vocabulary and the rest of that stuff. Biased vocabulary. Yes. So, so the other thing to know about it is they encourage you largely because it's a business. They encourage you to take the SAT multiple times without penalty. There's two segments and they score the segments independently. So you get one score at the end of each test, but the colleges allow you to pick your highest segment score and they call it a super score. So when you apply to college, you can say, all right, I've taken the SAT twice or three times and I got, you know, an 8,000 and 9,000 and a 40,000. Great. I'm going to pick the 40,000 for that segment. And likewise with the other segments. So you do this combo okay. wacky math. It's to get all out need of 800. Well, and I if don't want to give anything away. If you got a 750 on math in one, in one math and English turn, right. and on the next one, you got a 600 in math, but you got a 750, you can super score it by the using both of 750s. Right? Bingo, bango, bongo. So what he ended up doing, he took it twice Actually, he took it, uh, he took the practice, did very well. So then when he took the real one, he did better than the practice, but we were hoping it would be a bigger jump. So we thought, well, you know, you're fine. You've got the number you need. What's it going to hurt you for another four hours of your life? Go take it again. So he did just take it again this last time. And mine's a little bit older than you. So this is his last shot. So he took it and he flopped his scores. So he got the identical super score with two. Yeah. It's like, it was, it was like, bing, bong. So we went high, lower, Lower, higher in both cases. So the net number of the super score is the same. Didn't move. I'm like, really? 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 But it's, he's still, he's right where he needs to be. He's, he's not at off the charts. We've, the, unfortunately and fortunately for us, his group of contemporaries are literally off the charts. We've, we've had kids take it the first time they take it and they were um, 10 points shy of a perfect score and came home crying. And took, ah, it, fuck and, you. and took it again to get the perfect score. And, and on Halloween, when I put the burlap right. sack over their head, there's and a I knife beat them in with yours. A, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I beat them with a baseball bat because you're a douche for crying over yeah. 10 points. Don't eat that Reese's cup, Charlotte. It's for your brother. I, yeah. prom- <laughs> I promise you, you won't like it. It's for your brother. No, no, you can have this one. These are delightful. One. These are delightful people and honestly deserve all of the riches coming their way. But the problem is, it's not even a problem. The, the reality for my son, is that in his close circle of friends, 10 friends, eight of them are in that category. And that ain't his category. He's doing great. He's doing better than great. But at the same time, when you're surrounded by, it's kind of a, we're all kind of your a head friends. Fake. Were all of your friends off the charts like this when you went to school? Because these are scores that I never saw when right. we were, we, just, they weren't. We had one kid, uh, and I, I know her, she, she ended up with a, I feel like it was a perfect score. If it wasn't perfect, she would have told you the exact number that it was. So, and now you, somehow you can get like a better than perfect score. Like they do. I don't even, I don't fucking know, but no, we had one who had that. And there was also, it was very different. You didn't apply to really more than a handful of schools. You didn't, you just didn't go through this. There was no click a button. It goes 50 places. You didn't take the test over and over again. You right, just said, kids are, yeah, I'm going to go to these schools. Go. You know how kids are just smarter now than they've ever been? I, I don't. I, I feel like the dynamic has changed. Well, that's, that's not true. I think that the expectation of what they should know and the requirements of what they are taught have both increased dramatically. I don't think the kids are smarter. I think that they have absorbed a whole lot more required knowledge. I think they're still stupid fucking kids. Yes. And I think that in addition, but I think in addition to being stupid fucking kids, I think that they are massively stressed out and don't have nearly the coping skills that we had because 
or or our forebears we had before us. Constantly disappointed. <laughs> there, we we had the ongoing sociology experiment, which was not all that great, right? Where you've got to figure out how to deal with things that don't go your way. And and you know, if John were here today recording with us, he would be able to chime in excessively on this. But my point being, in shifting the way that we're trying to create the world that we all want to live in. Some things naturally fall away and they're not replaced with new coping mechanisms. So now there's all this, you know, we've got technology that we didn't have. It's also driving kids to be, to have far more insular mental health issues, right? When we were out in nature, when we were socializing with other people, when we were doing things that didn't require a little tick, 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 phone, 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 we had other problems. You know, you go into the park in the middle of the night, you're going to get into trouble <laughs> in a lot of ways. Nothing there's, good happens after midnight. Exactly. Online or in person. Anyway, back to SATs. How was how was your SAT moment? He did okay. Is this um, time number one, time number million? This is time number one. Congratulations. His first time taking it. And uh, he's going to take it again. He's happy with math, not happy with English. But we knew that. He's math boy. He's like, what do you mean I got one wrong? I'm like, okay, let's talk about <laughs> it. Like he, He's math boy, but English, right, right. All of the schools that he was looking at that are non, your kids are looking at engineering, all the, I don't know what I want to do with my life schools would be happy to take him, but he's going to try to, he's going to try to up it one more time. Dear listener, is your family going through a struggle that you want to share with us? Do you want to know who should pay the fucking check? Uh, let us hear from you. We would love to hear. Hey, Amy, thank you for coming out and, or staying in and <laughs> chatting with me today. Thank you so much for listening, dear listener. We love you and we'll talk to you and hope you talk back at us next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.